So there are a lot of interesting things that you can do using procedural animation in Unreal. Uh, this is an example, and uh, we're going to talk about how to build this structure. And that includes assembling the geometry, setting up the rotation, and applying the color. Uh, I use this kind of stuff a lot. I don't really know much about animation, and so whenever I want something to move, which is pretty routinely, I will use these kinds of techniques where within the, the blueprint, we're using uh, timelines to create movement like this. So let's take a, a quick look at, at how this is set up. Each one of these is essentially a pair of spheres, and they have a central pivot that they are both rotating around, and then each pair is offset by five degrees, and there are 72 pairs, and then the colors are dictated by the position of the spheres as they rotate around the circle. So let's take a quick look at what's going on in terms of the actual mechanics of the setup. So the setup is we create two spheres at the origin, and each sphere is offset 50 units in positive and negative x, and then we create a child component actor. The child component actor is effectively like an empty group in Maya, we're going to take the spheres and make them children of that child component actor. That way the spheres will inherit any modifications to the transform that we might want to apply to the child component actor. Once that's complete, we're going to move the group over about 500 units, and then we're going to create a second child component actor at the origin. And we're going to take all of this stuff and make it a child of that new child component actor. And then we're going to rotate the whole thing five degrees per generation of sphere groups here. So we're going to end up with 72 sphere groups at five degree offsets. And that'll give us 360 degrees so we get our full circle. The color is determined by generating a value between zero and one per sphere based on its order of creation, and then using that float data to drive a dynamic material parameter, which will generate some color based on the information. And we'll talk about how all that is set up here in just a few minutes. All right, let's take a look at this in action in a blueprint. Uh, let's start by right-clicking here in the content browser. We'll go to Blueprint Class, and I'm going to select an actor, Blueprint. Call this one BP Helix Demo. Let's open it up. So I will just add some stuff here manually to show you what we're doing with the code once we get to that point, or the, the Blueprint Node Network stuff. I'm going to click on Add. And I'm going to type in static mesh actor. Actually, it'll, it'll be a static mesh component. So the difference between a static mesh actor and a static mesh component is a component is owned by the blueprint, whereas an actor lives out here. So we'll call this one whatever, sphere one. And you can see nothing shows up. And the reason for that is it doesn't know what the static mesh is going to be. We need to go ahead and set that. I already have a static mesh over here in environment. And this is basically just if you create a, a sphere with a modeling menu. So I'm going to select it. I've named it SM Helix Sphere. And then I'm going to come over here with my sphere component selected and plug it in. So there we go. There's our sphere. And if you mouse over it, you can see that it is a static mesh component, right? So let's scoot this over. What did we say? Like negative 50. And then I'm going to duplicate this. And we'll set this one to positive 50. Make this a little, a little larger here. Just pipe that directly in there. Okay, and then I'm going to click Add again, and I'm going to just do a child. Just a child actor. This is our empty group. And drag it up so it's a child of the default scene root. I can say Attach, and then I'll grab these two and then attach them here to our child actor. And that way, if I rotate my child actor, the spheres will rotate as well. So that's the nuts and bolts of it, right? We're going to just be creating another child actor. Uh, actually, I, I guess I can just show you the whole, the whole step here. And then we're going to take this and scoot it over 500 units. And we're going to create a new child actor. And make this one a child of the default scene root. And then effectively do that, right? So for each time we run through this process, we're going to just offset that group by five degrees per generation. And that way, if I grab this child actor, it's going to be very happy to continue rotating on its C without being really all that concerned about the fact that it's at some strange angle like that. So using this stacked child actor arrangement is going to allow us to specify some transforms where we want them and, and to not muddy the water too much about figuring out what the actual rotation would need to be if this thing was not parented here. Okay, so anyway, we don't really need any of this stuff here. That's just what we're going to do now with our code. 
We don't need the actor or the actor begin overlap event or the event tick. And off of our event begin play, we will call a function that we're going to create now. Or I guess it's a custom event, right? Custom event. And I, I'm going to do this because there's a few things that I'm probably going to end up calling on begin play. And I would like to be able to manage them independently. So the first thing we got to do is we are going to add a static mesh component, right? This will be our first sphere. And then from that object, we've got to pull off from the object itself so that it has the context of what I'm talking about. I'm going to type in set static mesh. And we will select the static mesh and then click this little circle with the arrow on it. So that'll give us our first one. You can see we have a relative transform, so I will pull off of that. We want to do a make transform down here at the bottom. And this one we will say 50 and X. And then I'm just going to copy all of this and make this negative 50. So for now, we're just going to have our two spheres. We have our generate spheres event here, which is going to get called by our event begin play. So let's go ahead and just make sure all of that is working as expected. We can delete the one that's in there. And if I hit play, we should see two spheres. Great. All right. So now we need to create that first child component actor. So we can just type in child component and we got our add child actor component. For now, we're going to leave the relative transform alone. We are going to move this thing over eventually, but not quite yet. Now we need to do an attach, right? So we're this is where we attach our sphere static mesh components to this new child actor component. So I'm going to pull off, let's see. Yeah. The static mesh component is what we want. And we're looking for attach component to component. And we're actually going to need a couple of these, one for each static mesh component. So you'll notice I'm not pulling off of the, well, there's nowhere to pull off from the set static mesh, but this, so this, is, this is definitely going to be a function that is available only on the static mesh component. And we want to this over here. So the parent of both of them is going to be this thing. And I'll go ahead and pipe it in like that and connect it like that. So I'm just sort of putting these things vertically so that's kind of a little bit easier to follow. That's when you start doing this kind of thing, it gets, you just have to go in and start lifting these connection lines because otherwise it can get a little hard to follow. But it is very, very useful when you've got a lot of this going on to keep it well organized. All right. So we will compile and save. We're not going to see anything different if I were to run this, but if I make another transform here, and in this case, I'm going to offset it 500 units. So this is where we would expect it to be in terms of its origin. So it's probably going to be over here somewhere. Great. Okay. Now the final step is we're going to create a second child component actor. We'll duplicate our attached component to component. So this new child component actor will be the second empty group effectively. So that will be our parent. And then the first child component actor is going to be the child. So hopefully that all makes sense. I'm gonna pull off from our relative transform there. We'll type in make transform. 
And in this case, I want to rotate it. And I think, I can't remember. I want to rotate it this way. So that's going to be Y. So we'll say five degrees in Y. So we should see it lifted up a little bit. You see it's got a little bit of an angle on there. That's working fine. All right, finally, we're going to take all of this and put it into a for loop. Yeah, let's scoot this stuff out of the way a little bit. So we'll just type in for loop, grab this one down here in flow control. All right, so what we need to do is we need to replicate this 72 times. So we're starting to count at zero, so we only need to go to 71. And we've got our index. And so what we need to do is rather than piping in five here, we want to do five times our index. So the first one's at zero, the second one's at five degrees, the one after that's at 10, 15, and so on. So I'm going to pull off and type in multiply. We're going to multiply this times five. And then we want to plug it in over here. So let's see if I can make that happen. Oh, I need to do one thing. In rotation, I have to split this struct pin so I can access the rotation for y independently. So we'll do that. It's going to give us a little conversion from an int to a float. OK. We run it again. There we go. All right, so the next video will take a look at how to set up the movement and the color if we have time.